Hello and welcome to a student-focused episode of the Sociology Show podcast. This podcast is sponsored by Collins. High-quality student books, teacher guides and unbeatable value revision for GCSE and A-level sociology. And so Sociology Show listeners can get 25% off Collins Sociology resources until the end of December 2021, including the new book, How to Be a Sociologist, an inspiring introduction to studying sociology at A-level and university. Simply head to collins.com co.uk forward slash sociology show and enter the code sociology show at the checkout terms and conditions apply i'll give you that again it's collins.co.uk forward slash sociology show and if you enter the code sociology show at the checkout then you are entitled to 25 percent off collins sociology resources the sociology show podcast is also brought to you in association with tutor to you sociology the exam performance specialist for a level and GCSE sociology students and teachers. And so you can visit their website, which is tutortoyou.net forward slash sociology for revision guides, flashcards, revision videos, and everything else that you need for your A-level or GCSE sociology studies. Hello there. My name is Jarrett Rose, and I am an American international student and PhD candidate in the Department of Sociology at York University in Toronto, Canada. My research consists of using qualitative methods and social theory to explore culture, consciousness, and health and illness, with a particular focus on mental health. While in a moment I'll describe my dissertation research, most recently I have been working in the field of global public health. Over a year ago, I joined a brilliant team of scholars from York University and Harvard and researchers from West Africa to analyze the social, cultural, and political economic dynamics influencing both the outbreak and the response to the 2014-2015 Ebola virus disease in West Africa. As an example of this work, in a recently published paper in the International Journal for Environmental Research and Public Health, We explored the efficacy of community-based initiatives in earning better trust relations between local leaders, citizens, Ebola survivors, and the international response teams tasked with assisting the outbreak response. We found that the direct involvement and active participation of Liberian community members in various phases of the epidemic response facilitated a change in people's risk perception and trustworthiness of outbreak response teams interventions that are of the utmost importance in a region with the history of colonialism and extractive industries, structural poverty, civil wars, the slave trade, and a lack of sufficient local and public health measures. My dissertation consists of studying people who, after literally decades of mental distress and failed psychiatric and psychotherapeutic treatments, use psychedelics as a last-ditch effort to overcome anything from depression and anxiety to addiction, trauma, and suicidality. As a sociologist interested in mental health, culture, and consciousness, my intervention in the so-called psychedelic renaissance is to better understand how the use of psychedelics medicinally and in social contexts impacts mental health, identity, behavioral, and psychological repertoires, and the life course overall. In my research, I engage in in-depth interviews with participants over the age of 30 who have traveled to week-long and communal psychedelic healing retreats oriented specifically towards introspection and the resolution of trauma. I'm interested in how the cultural set and setting of the healing retreat impacts psychedelic consciousness, personal and communal well-being. The cultural set and setting can be considered anything from knowledge and insight to the social and physical environment to the lessons taught by psychedelic guides and the items and symbolic objects of interest taught to participants. I'll go into detail about two specific aspects of my research. One of the primary research questions that orients my study is that of culture and motivation. What convinces people that psychedelics might be worthwhile in treating trauma? And how does the broader cultural environment and the individual participant's cultural background influence one's decision to pursue this form of therapy? Why, after all these years of suffering and of utilizing more, quote, traditional or common sense approaches to psychiatric issues, did psychedelic medicine become a viable option for people to try? And what did participants go through in order to learn about and commit to using what are still illegal substances to overcome their personal, though social, issues? To put it succinctly, I found that the main motivational force driving such behavior is a sense of despair and lack of options. 
People are fed up with not living their best lives and come to the point where they're willing to try almost anything at all. And sadly, this seems to be the last option for many of my research subjects. I've also found that this data works in tandem with sociological theories of motivation, action, agency, and emotion, though it also provides some interesting points of theoretical intervention. Another primary research question that I'm working with pertains to the psychedelic retreat experience itself, which I understand through the lens of what is called cultural set and setting. Here, I use theoretical tools from cultural sociology and symbolic interactionism, namely Randall Collins' interaction ritual chains theory. Collins' work combines Durkheim's studies of religion and collective effervescence with Irving Goffman's symbolic interactionism to posit a theory of the genesis and transmission of culture. I use this theory to explore how the cultural environment impacts not only the generation and transmission of symbolic objects, but psychedelic consciousness as well. In other words, theories of psychedelic consciousness posit an amplificatory effect to the personal and social environment one takes the drug in, thus highlighting the importance of the social milieu in the drug experience itself. In this sense, I study how strangers inhabiting a social context, that is, the psychedelic retreat, created by guides for the purpose of trauma reduction are impacted by the psychedelic consciousness situated in a particular social and cultural context. And to quickly summarize my preliminary findings, every single one of my participants has had an overwhelmingly positive experience from the psychedelic retreat. In addition to my dissertation work, I'm also working on a few other projects with regard to the sociology of psychedelics, culture, and mental health. For example, I recently wrote an essay for a research cluster that I am a member of called Critical Perspectives on Mental Health slash Mad Studies, which, in conjunction with Madness Canada, just produced a new edition of what we call Canada Watch, which spotlights academic research both from professors and PhD students in Canada. In my essay, called Decolonizing Western Psychedelic Consciousness, I describe how much of the knowledge and awareness of psychedelics that we have in the Western world comes to us from indigenous healing practices, some of which have been going on for literally thousands of years. Far from our typical psychiatric understanding of mental distress as individualistic, apolitical, and as a purely biological phenomenon, Indigenous practitioners of psychedelic plant medicine recognize that health and well-being are always embedded in larger social, cultural, political, and historical contexts. In other words, rather than consider mental illness as located in the brain via abnormal chemistry, indigenous wisdom sees distress in a multi-layered fashion rooted in social, political, and historical relations, what we can effectively call a biopsychosocial model of distress. I argue that if we are to continue borrowing from indigenous traditions, traditions that bring with them important implications for contextualizing well-being in our relationship with the social and natural environment, it is imperative that we begin to reconcile our relationship with indigenous traditions, and in particular, the 500-year history of colonialism that casts a looming shadow over the knowledge and wisdom translated to Western society by indigenous peoples. Lastly, the project that I'm most excited about consists of a book chapter that I'm currently writing that will be featured in an edited collection on social and political theory in surfing and skateboard studies. This work borrows a style of cultural and consciousness analyses from a chapter of my dissertation research that I described earlier, in that it considers the role of cultural set and setting in psychedelic journeys. Preliminarily titled Turn On, Tune In, and Paddle Out, I engage a historical cultural analysis of the mid-20th century surfing scene in Southern California, using tools from symbolic interactionism and cultural sociology, mainly with reference to, again, Randall Collins' theory of interaction ritual chains. I use this analytical foundation to illustrate the basis of surfing and surf culture in mid-20th century using Collins' theory to show how culture becomes inscribed in both bodily and psychological rituals and the attendant symbolic objects. Surfing and surf culture in the early 1960s, in other words, serves as the cultural set and setting upon which the later 1960s and 1970s psychedelia and the concomitant counterculture were introduced. By studying the culture of surfing, I can thereby theorize how psychedelic consciousness is impacted by the cultural scene in which it is ensconced in. 
I then suggest a form of co-production occurs whereby culture impacts consciousness and consciousness in turn impacts and evolves the culture. In this sense, I understand psychedelics as a form of cultural amplification and co-production of new forms of culture, such as new forms of surfing and lifestyles or the introduction of surfboard technologies. In summary, with this research, I hope to ground a nascent sociology of psychedelic medicine, consciousness, and culture, and to assist with creating better tools and analytical devices that can be used in clinical and therapeutic settings and on psychedelic healing retreats. After finishing this dissertation by early summer of next year, I will enter the job market. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I love meeting new people and having conversations about sociology and a variety of other aspects of interesting forms of culture. You can find me on Twitter at Jarrett Rose and the number four. That is J-A-R-R-E-T-T, Rose like the flower and the number four. Thank you very much for taking the time to listen to this, and I hope to hear from you. The Sociology Show podcast relies on the kind contributions of sponsorship and donations. If you enjoy the show, then you can help with the hosting costs by donating as little as £5 on the GoFundMe page. Simply visit uk.gofundme.com and search for The Sociology Show. If you can donate, then you will be sent a Sociology Show pen as a small thank you for your continued support of the show.